Democrats in Georgia claim they're getting out the vote like never before, a day after President-elect Joe Biden campaigned in the state for the high-stakes Senate runoffs. Democratic candidate John Ossoff spoke with our CBSN political reporter, Caitlin Huey Burns, about what's at stake January 5th. And we are getting out the vote like never before by inspiring people about what's possible when we win these Senate races and making sure that everybody knows that if Mitch McConnell continues to control the United States Senate, he will try to do to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris exactly what he tried to do to President Obama. They will block the COVID relief and jobs bill that we need. They will block the increase to the minimum wage that working families need. They will block affordable health care. They will block the civil rights and voting rights legislation that we need. We can't afford gridlock and paralysis because we have good work to do, and we can only do it by winning these two Senate races. It appears efforts to get out the vote on both sides are working. Data from the Secretary of State's office show more voters turned out for the first day of early voting than for the general election. On Monday alone, 168,000 ballots were cast. That's nearly 30,000 more than the number of votes cast on the first day of early voting in November's election. CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns joins me now from Marietta, Georgia. Hello, Caitlin. So in November, Joe Biden got about 100,000 more votes than John Ossoff. How did Ossoff account for that when you asked him about it? That's right. Joe Biden got more votes than John Ossoff and John Ossoff's opponent, uh, David Perdue, the incumbent senator here, senator here, got more votes than Donald Trump. So that suggests that maybe some voters split their tickets. But Ossoff told us that he thinks that there were voters who turned out and for the presidential election at the top of the ticket, but didn't vote down ballot. And he thinks as this race narrows to just two candidates, himself and Purdue, that voters will think differently about this. And he pointed to those early vote numbers that you just mentioned as a way to show that voters are uh, excited about voting and they're hoping to turn out new voters here in Georgia as well. Take a listen to a little bit of what he told us. Well, I got more votes than any Georgia Democrat running statewide in the history of this state. The turnout was extraordinary in November, and we're continuing to mobilize. For example, the tens of thousands of people who became eligible to vote because they turned 18 just between November and January, we are continuing to build momentum to generate record turnout. We generated record turnout in November. We'll do it again in January. So the challenge for candidates in a runoff is that you usually don't have the kind of turnout that you do in a general election, and especially at this time of year heading into the holidays. So that's why all the campaigns have been out there vigorously campaigning. Almost all of the candidates have bus tours going on this week, and they're encouraging everybody to get out the vote ahead of the January 5th official runoff date. Yeah, I know, Caitlin, you told us earlier this week you can't turn on the TV without seeing at least five ads uh, within the course of just a few minutes. Uh, so Georgia is dealing right now with over half a million coronavirus cases. Here's what John Ossoff had to say about negotiations on a relief package in Washington. Congress is introducing a bipartisan uh, coronavirus relief bill today. We're hearing that the details are that it will include some direct payments to uh, Americans, uh, what do you make of that from what you may have heard so far about the legislation? The fact that the Senate has obstructed direct economic relief now for going on eight months demonstrates how little they care about the economic plight of working people in this country. A COVID relief bill must include direct stimulus payments to Americans who need help right now, who are entering the holiday season in dire economic straits. And I want to call upon Senator Perdue to reverse his opposition to those $1,200 stimulus checks. The same Caitlin, what else did he tell you about his vision for recovery in Georgia? Well, he said that would be the first line item that they would have to address if he were elected and entered Congress in January. He said the pandemic is front and center, the recovery, getting people vaccinations. Of course, the CDC is located 
in Atlanta, so making Georgia uh, really kind of front and center in this pandemic. Uh, but this issue of coronavirus relief has been center stage for all of the campaigns. You hear the Democrats talking about it and accusing the Republicans, as he just did, of holding up relief efforts. And the Republican candidates, Purdue and Leffler, have also been campaigning on relief efforts as well. They have been blaming the Democrats for stalling a negotiation. So those direct payments are something that Ossoff has been asking for and pushing for for a few weeks now. And those direct payments weren't included in original talks, but today, of course, we learned uh, that they will be included in this new round. And Caitlin, Georgia is a historically red state, so Democrats there often run more moderate campaigns. Where do John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock sit on the spectrum? You know, Elaine, it's interesting because if Ossoff and Warnock are successful in this race, it will show kind of a new style of campaigning in Georgia. When I asked Ossoff about that traditional strategy that Democrats run in the South, he said that he points to someone like John Lewis as a model. Um, uh, he also said that Georgia is a state that's becoming increasingly diverse, and that helped Biden win this state in November by nearly 12,000 votes. So the Democratic candidates here are trying to replicate that kind of turnout, focusing on the diversity here in Georgia and the expanding demographics. Uh, we'll see if that pays off. Republicans traditionally have a high success rate in runoffs here in Georgia. They've won all of the runoffs before, uh, but it could be a different scenario this time around if Democrats are able to make the turnout that Biden did. That's a big question, however, and something that the campaigns are focused on. Caitlin, before we let you go, I want to discuss the Republican side of this race. Republicans have been reluctant to acknowledge President Trump's defeat. What have incumbent Senators Leffler and Purdue said about that? Right. We were wondering if McConnell acknowledging Biden's victory yesterday would do anything to move the Republican senators here to say the same thing. And they haven't yet. Actually, earlier today, Kelly Leffler, one of the senators up uh, for uh, election this time in this runoff, uh, she was asked repeatedly at a press conference earlier today whether she agreed with McConnell that Joe Biden is the senator, uh, sorry, is the president-elect, agreed with reality. And she dodged the question several different times. She said that January 6th, the day that Congress convenes to certify the results of the Electoral College, is a long way off from now, in her words, and that the president can let his legal process play out. So really interesting there that she said that she was focused on her race, but would not acknowledge the results of the presidential race here. Of course, as we know, the Electoral College already voted this week, certifying the results. Joe Biden was the winner. McConnell said as much. But we're not yet seeing senators like these involved in these really close races where they have to turn out Republican base voters uh, go that far yet. And we saw in our CBS News polling earlier this week that a majority of Trump supporters want Republicans in Congress, they say, to do everything they can to keep Trump in power. And they, a majority of Trump supporters also said in that poll that they believe that Joe Biden's election wasn't legitimate. So that's kind of the dynamics here on the ground. And what they also have to do, though, while that's all going on, is make sure their voters turn out in this election. So that's been the message coming from them. And when Mike Pence, the vice president, comes here tomorrow, that's something he'll be pushing as well. All right, Caitlin Huey Burns on the campaign trail for us. Caitlin, thank you. Thank you.